Okay, so let's wrap up lesson 3.2 with a little bit of a true false game, and then we're going to respond to everyone's favorite jelly bean, Mr. Sherman. So spend a moment, press pause, and ask yourself are these statements true or false? Okay, so mutations sometimes result in an adaptive trait? That's true, we saw that with the osteolobes. Mutations sometimes result in a non adaptive trait? Yeah, that's also true. Traits introduced by mutations will always become more common in a population. Nope. And then traits introduced by mutations will sometimes become more common in a population. Yeah, that's true. Okay, hope you did well on that. Now let's respond to Sherman. So, long-haired rabbit. <clears throat> It's really cold here. These rabbits must be glad they have long fur. This environment used to be warmer. It's gotten colder over many generations. And long ago, when it was warmer, there were no long-haired rabbits here. How is that possible? I thought adaptive traits had to be present in order for a population to adapt to its environment. Yes, we know that every so often, mutations can introduce a new trait into a population. Oh, I get it. The rabbits must have been cold, so they had an adaptive mutation for long hair so they would survive. Well, no, Sherman. Mutation doesn't work like that. Here's how it really works. So, Sherman actually is getting really close to a correct explanation here but there's a little something he's missing. So go ahead, write and discuss. Complete the sentence. Well, no, Sherman, mutations does not work like that. Here's how it really works. Okay, and also consider, if there had been a mutation that led to no fur for the rabbits, what would have happened to that rabbit? And finally, why did the mutation that resulted in a long-haired trait in those rabbits become more common in the population?